Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. As you know, I have reviewed the Yamaha's AG03 mixer audio interface, this thing here, uh, in my last couple of videos and it's a fantastic unit to have for small recording, home recording and live performances for podcasting, even YouTube uh, video production for the audio side of it and so on. I thought before I go on to the next step of showing you how to record a song with the uh, Yamaha's AG03, I thought I'll go through and show you how to install the software DAW that comes with, uh, with the mixer. Cubase AI. Yeah, there's an information in there and a code that you can enter to download your free copy of the Cubase uh, DAW. Um, so I'm going to use that software to show you how to record a song, but I thought I'll go through some of the installation and the licensing options of Cubase AI, because it's a little bit trickier than uh, normal standard software installation, in that it requires an iLock type e-licensing software, and it can be a bit tricky. So I'll guide you through and show you how to install it and run it and do the registration through the e-licensor and then run Cubase uh, AI. Okay, open up your favorite uh, browser and visit steinberg.net website. And if you haven't got an account with them, you can register and create an account. So click on my Steinberg link. Yes, that's correct. I already have my username as Vache there. So um, if you don't have an account, you can click on create an account and open up a new one. So go through the, all the email registration and confirmation. And once you have it, we click on login. So to get yours working, all you need to do is click register and download access code. Right here, you enter the code which is found on that piece of information paper which was included with your Yamaha AG03 or 06. Follow up the information, you will get an email as well confirming it and you will get your access code to enter in the e-licensor. Once you have completed the registration of your code on their website, there will be a page that will ask you to actually download uh, either the Windows or Mac OS version of Cubase LE AI. And then it's about two and a half gigabytes of data, so depending on your internet speed, it might take a while to download. And once you've downloaded, it's a zip file for the Windows version, which is I'm demonstrating at the moment. Once you extract the zip file, there will be an executable called Start Center, EXE, and another folder called Cubase LEAI Elements 8 for Windows. So you double click on the Start Center executable. You'll have the welcome Cubase AI 8 instruction. As you can see, it uses the Cubase full professional technology. You can record audio and MIDI, and up to 32 audio and 48 MIDI tracks simultaneously. Includes 28 powerful audio effects and an instrument, the Helion, with 185 instrument sounds. And there's also you know, a special upgrade that you can do um, with special pricing for Cubase Elements 8. Next screen, it will allow you to open the README file or install and activate and register. Let's uh, click on install and follow up the installation. For me, it asked me if I wanted to search the web to see if there's any updated version of the, um, the Cubase, even though I had just downloaded it, I thought, uh, yeah, why not do, yes, search for updates and download. So it starts looking for the update in the next screen. And then it asked me if I wanted to install a 64-bit version or 32-bit version. Now, depending on your OS, if you're using Windows, any version, I guess 7, 8, 8.1 or 10, depending which version you have installed, 32-bit or 64-bit, you can install the appropriate version. And also keep in mind that even there, though you might have 
Windows uh, 64-bit version installed. If you have any VSD plugins which are only 32-bit version, if you install the 64-bit version, those VSDs may not work. So in that case, you might want to install a 32-bit version of Cubase. Sonically, it will not make much difference, but if you don't have any VSDs which are reliant on the 32-bit, then, like myself, you can go ahead and install the 64-bit version. Next, it will search for updates. For, you know, it, it took me about a minute or more to on this screen, uh, searching for updates. Next, it found an update for uh, Cubase LE8 Elements and uh, Acoustic Agent for Cubase Element 8. Not sure which one they are, so I selected both of them. And uh, they're not small downloads, so they are quite big downloads as well. And I click download and install. Then it started going through downloading to over 924 extra megabytes on top of the 2.4 gig that I've just downloaded. Then it started the, the installation procedure once all that download was done. And then basically it uh, asked me to start the installation procedure, so I clicked the next button. Of course, uh, um, you know, we just click accept the terms of the license agreement and we click next. Whoever reads the whole list of software end user license agreement. We just want it to work. And you have an option here of what will be installed and all the relevant uh, included software and contents and VST plugins and the Hellion Sonic and Groove Agent and so on. Um, I just left everything as default. So install, I click next. And then it showed me and confirming what's gonna be installed and I click install. And it started uh, unpacking all of the files, hopefully the 2.4 gig that I have downloaded. And throughout the process, it will ask you if you want to install device software. I uh, just clicked install. And it went through the procedures of installing all of the different functions. It might take a while depending on your uh, PC um, capabilities. It could be anywhere between 15 minutes to, you know, an hour. I don't know. You tell me. And once it has done, then it showed everything was done and installed and I clicked finish. And I had two icons on my desktop, the e-licensor control and Cubase LE A8 Elements 8. Now double clicking and starting the e-licensor control center, I thought that would be the first thing to do so we get the licensing out of the way before we start Cubase, so it doesn't complain about licensing. We get the screen, and it asks us for online synchronization and maintenance. So I will assume that it wants to see, make sure that eLicenser Control Center is the latest version. So I click perform maintenance tasks. So it went ahead and start performing maintenance tasks and trying to see if it was the latest update version or not. And once it had done that, it came up on the screen. On the left hand side with my licenses and my hard drive, serial number, and my licenses included MP3 encoder and Cubase AI 8. So basically I clicked on enter activation code. In the next window, I in copied and pasted the activation code which I received through email from Cubase and that automatically showed that that license or activation code was for Cubase AI 8. So I click continue and ask me where would I like to install the license for that Cubase 8. So naturally I selected my hard drive and clicked on download license. It took uh, about 30 seconds for me to download the license. So I was patient, you know, patient, waiting. And now when I actually click my hard drive icon on the left, it showed that I had Cubase AI 8 license and then I had another Cubase AI8 license which expired after 300 starts not sure what that is and I had MP3 Encroder uh, which was again in a demo mode which remains another 20 starts so obviously if you want to go ahead and have MP3 um, encoding so you can export as MP3 then you have 20 times to use it before you have to purchase obviously the mp3 export license so we'll discover that in my next video and i'm not sure what is about the cubase ai8 
um, having 300 starts remaining or expiration date of the 29th of February this year. So we'll find out. But there's obviously, there's still a Cubase AI8 license with a key at the bottom. And once I've done that, I double click the uh, Cubase A LE AI Elements 8 icon on my desktop and the program started to run. And it asked me how to connect my ASIO audio driver straight away and it had automatically asked and, um, to, for me to select my AG03, 0603. So I said, uh, yes, please. And please don't ask me again and clicked OK. And once it's all of its drivers and VST plugins were loaded, this was my screen. So I guess now we are all ready to start recording a song, and which will be in my next video. Discovering Steinberg's Cubase 8 AI. Well, I hope now you know how to download and install Cubase AI and get it all licensed and ready to start recording some songs. So in my next video, I will go through some of the steps in setting up Cubase to talk to and listen to Yamaha AG03 or 06 mixer and start getting some tracks recorded in there. So if you liked this demonstration, give me the thumbs up. That way I know it was helpful for you. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, why not? Subscribe now, that way when I upload the next video, you'll be notified straight away. And if you haven't visited my website, recordingstudio9.com, you can do that as well and register there as a free member. It's all free, you can register there as well. There's a whole heap of information and resources for you to download as well as the project unplugged for you to discover. And until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio!